is the brain complex enough to understand itself, right? That's a real stumper. But my reply is that there's seven billion of us. If we all put our brains together, maybe we could understand it. My name is Sebastian Sung. I'm professor of computational neuroscience at MIT, and I study the connectome. Well, first of all, you shouldn't be embarrassed if you haven't heard this word before. It's quite a new word. It was coined in analogy with the term genome. So it's connect and then O-M-E at the end. You could imagine a flight map like the one you see in the back pages of airline magazines. So imagine that every city uh, were, were transformed into a neuron and every flight between two cities became a connection between two neurons. So that would be a kind of diagram that would describe a network of neurons. But now imagine that expanded to 100 billion cities and 10,000 flights from every city. That would be the complexity of the map of the network inside your brain. So why is it important to know the connectome? Well, one very old hypothesis in neuroscience is that your memories are somehow encoded in that diagram. So the, I should tell you that your connectome and mine are different, so connectomes are unique. And it may be that your particular pattern of connections, that's a lot of information, right, inside that huge wiring diagram, um, that might actually contain the information of your memories. More generally, I guess memories are the most kind of idiosyncratic aspects of our personal identities. So, but maybe your personality, maybe, um, maybe even people who have problems with psychiatric disorders, that might also be due to some kind of special, different kind of pattern in brain wiring. So I like to summarize that in the slogan that I am my connectome, that uh, my genome isn't really about my, it doesn't really say, say all, there is, there, all there is about my identity, but my connectome might. It's really a hypothesis. Uh, and another, another thing I should add is that your connectome changes over time. So that map of your brain is not fixed, but your experiences uh, can alter it. And that's one reason why we believe that experiences are leaving uh, the memories inside your brain through the connectome. You could think about finding this wiring diagram as a kind of reverse engineering. You've got a machine, you want to take it apart, disassemble it, right? Those of you out there who are real super, super nerds, super engineers, uh, are, will resonate with the idea of disassembling a machine to figure out how it works. But you can't just take a a brain and pull it apart into its individual neurons. They're so tightly entangled that it would just destroy them to do that. But we do something more radical. We embed the brain in a really hard plastic resin. So this is a dead brain. And we slice it into extremely thin slices, thousand times thinner than a hair. And we image them in an electron microscope, which is uh, extremely high resolution. And if you do that, you can make a virtual brain, uh, an image of a, every neuron and every synapse inside a piece of brain. Now, in order to f map out that piece of brain now, you have to trace the trajectory of every branch of a neuron through those images and find those synapses. And that turns out to be a very time-consuming task. So the images from one cubic millimeter of brain amount to about a petabyte of data if you image it at that resolution. So I want to emphasize that I'm talking about really high-resolution microscopy here, not, not an MRI scan like you see in the newspapers. So there, one cubic millimeter would be one pixel. But here, we're talking about a petabyte, petapixel. So that data is so uh, overwhelming that we are still struggling to deal with that, with that kind of deluge. And one way is to use AI, to use artificial intelligence to see the paths in those images. But AI still isn't uh, perfect, so we need people to interact with the AI to guide it and to correct it. And now we're inviting the public to join that. So we've created a website called iWire, E-Y-E, like the I, wire.org. It has an image of uh, the retina, the neural tissue at the back of the eye. It serves that up on the web, in your web browser. And you can join an online community and help us map out the neural connections. I think it's an exciting way of getting everyone involved uh, in a kind of endeavor that formerly only professionals could be, be involved in. It's a game, and it's, it's a game that we've all enjoyed at one time in our lives. It's like a gigantic three-dimensional coloring book. So you've just got to stay between the lines and color in the branch of a neuron 
um, as, uh, as you follow it through this three-dimensional stack of images. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's at its preliminary stages. The first result is that it can be fun. We have addicts, right? We don't have a lot of users yet, but we have some people who are very dedicated and excited. And we have a sense of community. If you go to the discussion forums, you'll see all kinds of uh, great comments and questions and, and hilarious things that people think of, creative things, uh, things that enhance uh, our site. So we've learned a lot from our users.